The nature of Outriders has put the game in a bit of a strange position. It combines a traditional third-person shooter with a story-based RPG, and on top of that, it layers a loot shooter formula that gives you weird, goofy, frequently awesome weapons and armor to chase as you progress through its campaign. When I reviewed Outriders at launch, I pointed out that it should be thought of more as an RPG than the loot shooter live game it appears to be. But though most of it might feel like an RPG shooter, Outriders does have a live service game's endgame, meant to keep players busy challenging themselves with tough content and chasing better and better loot. With the endgame comes the same problem that all live games deal with, the struggle to keep players engaged. Developer People Can Fly is addressing the endgame issue head-on with World Slayer, a big Outriders expansion due in June. The expansion makes major adjustments to character progression, the difficulty tuning challenge system, the loot chase, and the endgame, reworking a lot about Outriders to make it a game you can sink more time into. And that's to say nothing of the expansion's new story. We played about 90 minutes of World Slayer, although that was entirely too little to actually get a real sense of the expansion, both because it adds a lot of content and because its changes will take time for players to really sift through. World Slayer starts with a campaign that continues the story players wrapped up in the base game of Outriders, picking up almost exactly where it left off. While World Slayer assumes you finished the original story campaign and chased down orbital drop pods in Expeditions, Outriders original endgame activity, you don't have to have done those things to access the new expansion. You can boost your character up to the base game's level cap and start the new content immediately. So if you're new to Outriders, but have friends who are vets, you can join them in World Slayer without waiting. Anyway, hunting down those drop pods has also supplied you with new data for Abraham Zahidi, the scientist you recruited to your band of heroes in the main game. And with it, he discovers some new, upsetting information. The anomaly is a strange, deadly storm that routinely ravages Enoch, vaporizing people and occasionally turning some of them into godlike superhumans known as the Altered and it's growing in both size and power. If the anomaly keeps growing, it's going to wipe everyone out. We immediately see the threat of those new storms in an icy level at the expansion's start, where the volatile weather was so powerful, flying creatures were freezing and falling out of the sky. Not long after, the player's group returns to Rift Town, the primary home of their allies, to find it wrecked by storms as well. The story quickly becomes one of trying to find a way to do something about the anomaly, after Chana, another member of your team, experiences a vision of the future that provides a new lead. We learned a lot about the anomaly and its origins in the base game of Outriders, and with the survival of humanity on the line, there's not much choice but to go on another road trip across Enoch in an attempt to save the world. That's going to put us at odds with a new big bad, a scary looking altered called Ereshkigal, who leads the enemy insurgent faction, but who unfortunately didn't pop up during our playtime. The next level we saw takes the Outrider and their team to an abandoned fishing village as Tiago, another teammate, provides information about how we might reach a fortress controlled by the enemy insurgents. After Tiago gives us a little backstory about the village, in the form of a ghost story about a fisherman with a hook and a raincoat murdering insurgents, we learn the truth. The fisherman isn't a ghost at all, he's a towering insurgent boss, and the empty village is actually the site of an ambush. The fight against the fisherman and his gang is a tough one, mostly because he likes to rush around the battlefield picking up players so he can rip into them with that huge hook. But World Slayer doesn't drastically alter Outrider's moment-to-moment -moment gameplay, so these levels will feel similar to what players saw in the base game, although you should expect a host of new enemy types and bosses to freshen up combat a bit along the way. The big changes coming to the game in the expansion are actually somewhat more subtle. World Slayer's additions are aimed at giving you more to do over the long term, like the addition of the new PAX progression trees. Outriders already included three different skill trees that allow you to unlock abilities for your specific character. You pick a class at the outset of the game, like Demolisher, who controls rocks and gravity, or Trickster, which is all about slowing enemies and teleportation, and then use the skill trees to further specialize with specific abilities or stat boosts. World Slayer throws two more trees at you for each character, 
allowing you to specialize even further. You unlock skills and upgrades on the PAX trees with their own special PAX points, which you earn by progressing through the World Slayer story. But maybe the most interesting and meaningful addition to Outriders overall is the Apocalypse system, which upends the endgame as it's been established up until now, although we only saw a brief glimpse of it. When Outriders launched, it included a system that let you set the difficulty with world tiers or challenge tiers. World tiers were settings for the story campaign that gave you better loot as you turned up the difficulty. Challenge tiers were a set of 15 additional difficulty tiers that kicked in during the expeditions activity once the story was done. Apocalypse tiers replaced challenge tiers, expanding those optional difficulty tiers from 15 to 40. Apocalypse tiers add a lot of flexibility in making Outriders tougher, and therefore giving you a reason to keep playing. You'll be able to set your Apocalypse tier throughout all Outriders content, including the original campaign. And the payoff is in the loot. These tiers let you earn Apocalypse guns and armor, which is a new set of amped up gear that's even better than the best weapons and armor previously seen in Outriders. The big difference is the addition of a third modification slot to those weapons and armor. In the past, all Outriders gear topped out at two mod slots, which means Apocalypse gear is more customizable and will come with more unique perks. The best part of Outriders in the past was its ridiculous guns and armor with their own special perks, like my personal favorite, a shotgun that causes meteors to fall out of the sky and hit your target. Expect Apocalypse loot to add even more weird, awesome elements like that one. In addition to your PAX progression, there's also a new Ascension character progression system to go along with the increased difficulty of the Apocalypse tiers. Ascension kicks in after you've maxed out your character at level 30, the previous character peak from the Outriders campaign. After 30, you start earning Ascension points that you can spend for small but stacking boosts in four areas, Brutality, Endurance, Anomaly, and Prowess. Each of these categories has five subcategories into which you can bank points, giving you upgrades like boosts to your special attack damage or your overall health. The aim is to collect all 200 Ascension points to maximize your power across the board, but People Can Fly says it'll take a huge time investment to unlock them all, giving you something to chase throughout World Slayer. There's also a new endgame activity to go with Expeditions, although we don't know much about it yet. Called Trials of Tarya Gertar, it's apparently completely different from the Expedition missions Outriders veterans have already seen. Square Enix and People Can Fly say more information about the endgame activity is headed our way in the coming months ahead of the expansion's release. The time I spent playing World Slayer was a good reminder of what I liked about Outriders. Fast-paced shooter combat that mixes taking cover and planning with busting out powerful, ridiculous superpowers and crushing enemies to recover health. The additions to the overall formula, like Apocalypse Tears, Ascension Points, and Pax Trees all sound like significant improvements, but in practice we only got a small sampling of each of them. They're the sorts of changes that snowball over time starting off with incremental additions like buffing weapon damage by a couple of percentage points and slowly turning into meaningful ways to sculpt your playstyle as they pile up. The opportunity to spend more time in the weird and expansive world of Outriders is a strong draw for World Slayer, and all the new additions make it sound like People Can Fly has looked at its game and tried to identify its ways to enhance all of it. The RPG, the story, and the loot shooter endgame, but we'll have to see what those changes bring to the game overall. Because while a snapshot is promising, it's the whole of World Slayer that's going to reveal if this expansion brings the game what it needs to endure. Hey, there's someone else here. They're completely frozen. 